how happy are you to get a guy who has quality? Well, the one, really excited. I mean, really happy. Uh, you go through so many scenarios. I'm sure Jeff has alluded to that. You, you throw out and toss out possibilities and what could happen if you just stay true to uh, the draft setup and how you think it's going to fall. You have to play with so many other scenarios, and I think uh, those guys and everyone did a great job with scenarios. And here you are. You knew a wild card somewhere can be in that, in between that five. You didn't know who it could possibly be. And of course, you had two guys uh, that probably changed that with where they were picked, and then thus pushing a, a guy like Robinson to us. And um, and you're sitting there and you're looking at it happening. And one thing about being in that fifth position, you you knew you're going to get a player that was definitely right in your spot, but you didn't think that that would be the guy. And sure, and it all fell in place. And uh, you know, you, you prepare for everything, and then you hope, and then you finally get a player that you know can come into your team. Uh, with his attitude and just hearing his conversation uh, when he went on stage and talked about work i have to do work and then i had a chance to talk with him right after uh, you know he finishes uh, some of his media obligations there and uh, the whole concept of what we're trying to do what i wanted guys to be able to do is work first work for it first and that's the approach that that young man has what were your initial thoughts the first time you watched tape well you see well, wherever you see the, mo the motor the energy the motor uh, you know, it's, it's always, you know, I, heard, I heard John Thompson uh, was looking at a, a clip of him talking and it's easier to get, uh, to, to turn a, a live body down than to raise a dead man. And um, this guy has a live body that can create things offensively and defensively that you don't have to say, go do this. And that's one thing you have a motor already. He has unique skills to where he pr can play out on, on the floor. You see that he can move real well. Um, you know, defensively from defensive schemes, uh, pick and rolls, things like that. So he has that motor and you know he has the toughness, but the maturity level that he has, you know, he's faced so much already. And let, let us know that he, this guy is, a, is a, a veteran, so to speak, coming into our basketball team who's already seasoned. How do you think, how do you think he'll mesh with Cousins down low? I think he'll mesh with our basketball team, you know, so we don't want to piece things together right now. We we just got a new draft pick that's going to come to our basketball team and help our basketball team all the way around. And so all of our guys want to be in a working mode. He's going to fit that mode. And um, and then his basketball skills are going to speak for himself. Keith, what was your reaction when you were back there? Was it, I mean, it was pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Robinson was your guy. Mm -hmm. But was it when Kid Gilchrist went number two that, yeah. Well, you look at all the, 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 the mock drafts and things like that, and you saw that name there pretty prevalent. Uh, most throughout pretty much all the, the mocks that you look at and, and hear conversation. And, you know, everyone at this time of year telling stories, you know, so what do you hear? But you start to look at it and see that, okay, here's a guy, that kid Gil, Gilchrist goes, and then now another name that no one really had in there, and, and Waiters pops in there, and now here comes this kid falling right where we are you know, with a scenario that had already been created and here it, this guy is, you know. So the excitement was that here's a guy that you had in your, 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 your picks where you, if it happened, this would be a guy and it worked out. Is he the type of guy who's probably been like more basketball jump? Uh, mm -hmm. He's a guy who lives in the gym, mm -hmm. he be a guy you have no problem in the gym. Right. I think you, you, you won't, no, I don't, from what we've, you know, like I think Jeff said, you know, all the research and all the information you get on players and then things and talking to people, uh, around the guy uh, who are in contact but not in contact with him. You hear about these players, and he's one of those guys that are, that's a worker. You know, he obviously knows that he has to work. He's from a program that, that, that lends itself to working hard uh, before you can be productive. And so I don't think uh, you're going to have a problem with him wanting to work to become very uh, a very good basketball player. You know, overall, I think in his mind, he probably thought he was the best player, and I'm sure he's going to prove that. But he's a humble individual. Never on the phone, the conversation, and even when I met him in Chicago, he had a presence about him um, that just dictated that I'm going to work for everything that's going to be given to me, I'm going to work for it first. And uh, I don't think you'll have that attitude. Uh, he's going to bring that attitude to our basketball team, which is exactly what, uh, what, I, what we want, what I want, and what our basketball team wants. What do you think about the fact that you know, he's not like a one and done guy? He's mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I think he did, because I asked him that question in our meeting. Um, I asked him the question of, uh, you know, how would you react to not playing at the moment when you come into an NBA team? How would you feel about that? And he said, Coach, I'm just going to work. Now, you never thought that that conversation I had with him in Chicago would be a conversation that I can say to him again. You remember that question I had? Because now here he is, because you don't think those things are happening. 
But yet I asked that question to him and he said, Coach, I, I said, how would you handle a coach really challenging you to be much better? He said, well, Coach, if you're, you're challenging me, you must want me to be better. And so the questions that I had for him then, um, you know, now you can go back to that day in Chicago and listen to what he has to say and to now watch him grow in our program. Coach, you talk about the tragedy. What do you do bringing in a kid like this and you know might need some extra support? Mm -hmm. Well, we support them anyway. You know, that's the, that's what we do. That's what I do. Um, so, uh, coming into our environment now, um, it's hands-on all year round. It's not just uh, on the basketball floor. We do all we can to make sure that these guys are well-rounded as basketball players, people, um, and we want them to play at a high level on the basketball floor. But we also want them functioning well off the floor. And so, coming into this environment for him. It's, it's nothing, it won't be anything unusual with, as far as help because we have a staff that's, that's more than willing to help in any way they possibly can. On a personal note, how was it for you being in your very first draft <laughs> as a head coach for an NBA team? Well, you know, been around a lot of them, but being in there and, and interacting with Jeff, with, with Coop, uh, with Sharif, all the, the guys in the, it's our scouts, you know, first time I had a chance to uh, meet uh, some of our scouts, really and hear them and listen. You know, one, I had to just listen and pay attention, you know, and, and just listen. You come in new, you got to understand how a, this draft room works, you know, how they function, what they do. And I pay a lot of attention and just listen to a lot of the conversation and then added, and then Jeff and I, of course, with a lot of uh, communication along with the ownership. Um, so it was good. You know, I'm, I'm glad that was a part of it. Uh, I've got a chance to now have an identity of a couple of guys that you really like and want, and then hopefully that one of those guys you like uh, fall in your hand that you're ready to start coaching. What was the mood like in that room once he fell to five? I mean, I got to imagine you guys were pretty late. Well, I think it started when number two changed because now it started to move at a different little pace. It started to pick up some pace that it could be. It could be. And then finally, as this continues to evolve, and then once that four hit, you knew then that, that, that he was going to be in your lap. I won't say steal, but it's a good uh, collection of individuals when no one was looking. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 it was clear cut. Yeah, everyone in the, in the room was there. So it was no, it was no thought. Because you, like I said, you, you do so many of the scenarios, what ifs. And here's a what-if case if someone comes into, someone moves into a position being drafted in an area where you thought a player like him would be. And all of a sudden, that, that scenario played itself out. And so he's obviously the guy that you, uh, that you thought about because you looked at what could happen if that guy is there. When did y'all start hearing that Wade was, was a good possibility in the top five? Probably like when everybody else started hearing it. Yesterday? Uh, well, um, you no, know, I think this conversation probably was taking place a little bit sooner than that, but you didn't know for sure because, like I said, this time you, you call people and everyone you, everyone's talking to each other, but no one has a clear-cut idea. You, you have no idea what's going on somewhere else. Uh, you know, not that many people are going to be that foolish to tell you who they're going to draft, you know, or who they're thinking about. They'll tell you generalities, but not so much. They're going to. I think a lot of people enjoy working for their companies. You know, won't share that what type of information. Of of telling the truth. <laughs> hmm? I'm scared of them. I don't know. I've never understood it. Well, we tell each other the truth. I mean, you know, we can't, you know, we can't just, we can't tell everyone the truth. We can tell you today, <laughs> you know, we got a fabulous young pro and uh, we're excited about him and uh, not so much on what other teams are doing, but we got a great young pro, excited about this young pro. And, uh, and I just, I felt so good talking with him on the phone um, and just hearing that guy's humbleness and you could not imagine that his humbleness matches the way he plays on the floor. It's a complete different personality, kind of like mine, you know, off the floor before the games, I'm nice and mannered, you know. How unlikely was this? I just think it, was a, it, it happened because this is where this guy was supposed to be. You know, I think uh, it, things happen and how they happen, you know, how they reach to that point, everyone is, uh, comes close to being where they're supposed to be when, it, when it's time. And I think it was his time for, for us to have him. Uh, my time to be able to uh, be his first professional coach. You guys passed on the second round pick. You guys sold mm -hmm. it. Is, mm -hmm. For you and your mind, do you, did you already have enough young talent? You can yeah, it? yeah, yeah. You can see our we, our team is, is still very, very young. You know, even with uh, still maybe not a rookie, but yet experience uh, in Robinson. So, um, you know, having flexibility is the biggest thing. So now you can go out and do some things that you are looking forward to uh, to kind of get your team a little bit older. Uh, with some seasoned people. Um, so having another pick, you know, could it be another guy like a Thomas somewhere in there, but it would still have been a young player. 
you know, so we want to focus on uh, uh, being able to have flexibility. And I'm sure Jeff talked about that a little bit.